grabbed it in September. I've been using the Panasonic Lumix S5 and guys, I gotta say, I'm a big fan. Now I know I'm kind of giving you guys my answer at the beginning of the video, but let me tell you guys why. Now, if you guys have been watching my channel before, then you would already know that I was a big fan of, uh, of Lumix, of Panasonic, of the GH5. That's been my main camera that I've been using to shoot for a while now, but I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. I started to kind of lose just like the spark that I had whenever I'd use the GH5. I was tired of not having vlog and certain stuff like that, which we're gonna touch in this video. It's not gonna be a technical video. It's just gonna be my first impressions. I've had the camera, the Lumix S5 for about two months now. I've had plenty of hands-on. I've used it on several projects. And rather than just come on here right after buying the camera and just talking about what I like about it, you know, two weeks in, I'm glad that I've kind of had it in my hands for a few months so I can give you my perspective, especially if you're a Panasonic user or a GH5 user like me when you went from the GH5 to the Lumix S5. And uh, I can give you my opinion, give you my first hands-on, and we'll go from there. Maybe I'll make a settings video, but we'll take it from here. Now, the first thing I want to touch on with the Lumix S5 is honestly just the general ease of use of the camera. If you've used the GH5 before, then you already know buttons are in good places. You have a lot of accessibility settings like that. The body itself, I think the S5 is slightly smaller than the GH5. It might be a little bit heavier. I, I got to pick them up again. I honestly don't remember because I've been using my S5 so much. I don't really remember how heavy the GH5 is, but I want to say that the S5 is lighter, but the body I really love. You know why? Because it if you're a Sony user with the a7 III, a few people who I work with in my production company. Well, not mine, but the production company I make videos for and help edit videos for, et cetera, et cetera. They, most of them are Sony users. They have a Sony a7 III. And I think the S5 body is really similar to the Sony a7 III. It's kind of small, it's more compact, easier to, to kind of hold in your hand, easier to bring with you in like a camera bag or whatever. So for me, that's a big thing. I, I like the GH5 body, it's cool, but I like the fact that the S5 body is a little bit smaller. But since it is a full frame camera, where the GH5 is a micro four thirds camera, you're gonna have bigger lenses. But for me, for some reason, I prefer having bigger lenses. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. I love having the bigger lenses on the S5, especially if you're shooting handheld, it just makes it super easy. I can kind of grip the, the lens itself. For example, I have my Sigma 14 to 24. Pick this thing up. It's actually pretty expensive. It's about a thousand dollars, but it's a great lens. I wanted it for real estate so I could use it with the S5 because the GH5 has kind of been my camera for real estate so far. Only thing is I still have to be able to balance it on the Ronin S. This thing is so heavy. I've seen people use an, an EOS R, right? Or an R5, heavier cameras. I've seen people use heavier cameras to balance with the Ronin S and for some reason, I just can't figure it out. So I'm gonna kind of go back and see if that's just my fault or if it's just because this lens is so heavy but yeah the sigma 14 to 24 as you can see it's a pretty big lens super wide lens it's great the lumix s5 luckily is an l mount which i know a lot of people are not a big fan of but i don't think it's too bad great lens for real estate i love the bigger lenses it's like i said easy to hold like if you're doing handheld shooting kind of have your hand under slung here and then grip the body it, pull it close and whatever you can get really smooth handheld shots. Um, another thing I wanted to touch on just that I've noticed, and I'll say I watched a lot of videos before even buying it for the Lumix S5, but it's just, it's the picture quality, it's the video quality. A lot of people on YouTube, and honestly I have to agree because I've watched a lot of people's uh, videos, like I said, prior to buying the Lumix S5, has one of like the sharpest, like best looking picture in video of any camera, especially at its price point right now, which I think is really dope. Me, I'm still learning and I think a lot of it just has to do with lighting because I've cranked up my ISO a bit during my earlier shoots with the S5, which is why it had like grainier footage, but even still, it looks really good even with grainier footage. But the picture quality is super dope. It shoots in 4K, 10-bit, 422. If you have an external monitor, the I believe it's called the Ninja Atmos external monitor, something like that, shoots in 6K ProRes RAW, which is dope. I think I wanna pick that up. I still don't have like a cage for my camera, but that's one of those things I'm gonna get into eventually. But yeah, I can shoot up to 6K ProRes RAW external, externally, 4K, 422 and 10 bit internally from the camera itself. 60 FPS, there is a little bit of an APS-C crop. Not a huge deal, but it is a little bit annoying. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. I, I, I hate the fact that it crops in. Brought this camera out with me 
to San Francisco. Really, really beautiful footage. But the picture quality, in my opinion, is really great. Like, I think, I don't think it's leagues above the GH5, but it definitely has the full frame look that I was looking for. I was kind of getting tired of the look that the Micro Four Thirds cameras were giving me. I think the GH5 has this option too, but on the full frame camera, it's a lot better. With the S5, it allows you to shoot an anamorphic. So you're using more of the sensor. That way, if you're shooting for social, you don't have to shoot vertical. You can shoot horizontal and then just kind of crop in a little bit where you're going to have more of the sensor than if you were just shooting in 16 by 9 not using the full sensor to shoot so now one of my personal favorite things about the lumix s5 is the fact that it has a uh, vlog it has a log profile now a lot of you guys who use the gh5 or have used it before are probably going to mention how the gh5 has vlog which you do but you have to install it with firmware when I, I i still have a gh5 actually my gh5 is right here i love the gh5 actually one of my favorite cameras of all time absolutely the fact that you have to install firmware to have log on here is annoying to me I, i've heard and i've watched a lot of videos about the log v log on there not being that good now maybe that's on me maybe i should try it out maybe i'll install and we'll see maybe i'll do a video comparing vlog on the gh5 to vlog on the s5 but the vlog on the s5 has been amazing i'm not the best color grader or anything like that i'm still working on it it's definitely one of those areas that i'm working on right now but just having the flexibility to extract more detail from my image since I'm able to shoot in a flatter picture profile and I love being able to manipulate the colors to what I want with more wiggle room is really dope and I think it's kind of taken my production value to the next level so I can appreciate that. Also, the S5 has a native dual ISO. Low light shooting is a lot better than the GH5. Anyone who uses the original GH5 not the GH5S, the original GH5, you know that the low light on it is just not the best. Obviously, the ideal solution to that is to use lighting. You're not always going to have lighting with you, especially if you're doing like run and gun shooting or whatever. Definitely a lot more usable footage at high ISOs. I've gone up to 4,000 where it still looks pretty good. I feel like above 4,000 is where you're kind of pushing it, but I appreciate the fact that I can crank the ISOs up higher to be able to shoot when uh, the lighting is not very optimal. So now, as you guys can see here, the GH5, I think is one of the absolute best cameras when it comes to in-body image stabilization. The S5, it's definitely not equal to the GH5 with the IBIS, but it definitely performs to a pretty great level. If you're willing to give and take with the pros of the S5 to the cons, IBIS isn't as good, but I mean, if, I'm, if you're getting full frame, you know, just better picture quality, a few more accessibility settings, which I'll touch on, I'll take it night and day. The S5, it's still really great for handheld footage like i honestly don't think you can complain as long as you're not running around with the camera shaking it or whatever it is you're gonna get that smooth footage and uh for me it wasn't a big hit and i think since i still have my gh5 i don't really stress about it if i really am in a tight situation where i need really really good handheld footage i'll just grab the gh5 if you wanted to switch from the gh5 to the s5 or you're coming from uh, another camera manufacturer or whatever like sony or canon uh, i still think the s5 is going to outperform probably most if not all bold claim but most if not all of those cameras in terms of ibis it, it's a great it's a great solution it really is not up to par with the gh5 ibis but it's a solid solution so I, I i'd say that's a pretty good uh two thumbs up for me from what i've seen so far the buttons on the physical body of the s5 very satisfying the gh5 has really clicky buttons the s5 has more like a gooey press maybe that's not a good explanation but it's more of a softer press for the buttons where the GH5 has more of a clicky feel to a lot of the buttons. But honestly, that bothered me at first, but I came to really love it. It's lighter than the GH5, which I think is pretty good. You know, obviously when you get a heavier lens on there, that will uh, kind of offset that. But body itself is light, very ergonomic. It's very comfortable in your hands. I have relatively decent sized hands. So for me, it's a good size. If you have a smaller hands, I think it'll be good too, since it's smaller body wise than the GH5. The S5 really feels like a full frame GH5, man. Like coming straight off the gh5 i have no complaints there's nothing that i feel like i'm missing there's nothing that i feel like i missing out on or or want to go back to that draws me back to the gh5 besides maybe ibis or maybe the smaller lenses if that's your thing i prefer bigger lenses so it doesn't bother me but man the s5 is literally a full frame gh5 if you are looking for a full frame camera if you're tired of micro four thirds and you want a full frame alternative without switching cam camera manufacturers s5 is great man and at the price point i think i bought it for 1600 off ebay great shape by the way literally can't you know used camera but I, I almost forgot it was used until i was recording this video because it's in such great shape that's the best way i can sum up the camera and to top it all off it just has great accessibility settings i'm not going to dive very deep into it but i will just say just like the gh5 if you've used it it has a lot of great options for being able to button map certain settings so if you're looking for that and you want a lot of options like the fn buttons to be able to button map and change 
you know, certain options to make it easier. Instead of having to go into the settings, you could just make it a click of a button. The S5 does that too. Honestly, just as good as the GH5, so you're not losing out on anything there. Now, just to make it quick and concise, a lot of the things I talked about are things that I really enjoy about the camera. I'll just quickly touch on some things that I don't like. One of the cons that I wanna quickly mention with the S5 that has bothered me, one of the few things that bothered me about this camera is the fact that it has an APS-C crop when you're shooting in 60 FPS. Micro Four Thirds cameras say if you're shooting on a 14 millimeter lens, like my Lumix G Vario right here, it's 14 to 45. If I'm at 14 millimeters, it's really 28. So it's a two times crop factor. If you're shooting at say 20 millimeters, since APS-C crop has a 1.5 times crop factor, you're gonna really be shooting at 30 millimeters. So if you have 20 millimeter lens on the Lumix S5 and you shoot at 60 FPS, you're really shooting at 30 millimeters due to the crop factor. So that's pretty annoying, especially if you're trying to go for a wide shot, if you don't have a lot of room to work with. It's just like, it's not a big deal. It's not anything groundbreaking or anything that's gonna like piss you off about the camera, at least in my opinion. It is just, it is more annoying and more of a nuisance than anything, but that is a con absolutely for the S5 that I wanted to throw out there. But another thing is that there's a 30 minute record limit. Now, I believe the 30 minute record limit is only when you're in 4K. And I can't remember if it's when you're shooting in 60 FPS or not. Let me know in the comments if I'm incorrect there. I'm just doing this off the fly from what I remember. I believe it's only in 4K that there's a 30 minute record limit, but I can't remember if it includes when you're shooting in 60 FPS. But either way, the GH5 doesn't have any sort of record limit. Lumix S5, say if you're shooting in 24 FPS, 4K, 10 bit, 422, there is a 30 minute record limit. So you're not gonna be able to continuously shoot for say an hour if you're doing like a sit down interview. You're gonna have it stop at 30 minutes and then you're gonna have to hit record again, which obviously is really annoying if you forget. Keep that in mind with the S5, 30 minute record limit if you're shooting in 4K and everything like that. So. That is pretty annoying, that's a con for me. Um, now another thing is, and honestly this is probably standard practice and common knowledge, I'm not claiming to be an expert, I'm giving you guys my first impressions with the S5. Certain SD cards won't work, probably because it's newer and it just won't work with those old SD card converters, which, you know, like I said, I just found that that was one thing that I thought was a little bit annoying, and I'm gonna put that as a con just because it's less options for SD card usage, but I'm okay with some pushback on that one. And now a major thing for a lot of people, um, I think the APS-C crop in 60 FPS was gonna be a major thing, but another major thing with the S5 that's probably gonna turn a lot of people off, uh, it didn't turn me off, but I can see how it could turn others off, is that it doesn't have a full HDMI. With the GH5, you have a full HDMI port in here, if you guys can see that. If, if you can't, take my word for it. The S5 has a micro HDMI, which is like whatever, just get a cord or a converter, but most people are not gonna wanna do that. Most people want a full HDMI. Maybe they did it because of the body, to keep the form factor compact or to keep it small. I don't know the reason why they put a micro HDMI. I think that's an annoyance at most. For a lot of people, maybe it is a deal breaker, but definitely a con, definitely something I wanted to throw out there. So if you are looking to pick the S5 up or if you're coming from a GH5, expect there to be micro HDMI, not full HDMI. And uh, lastly for my cons is that there isn't a huge lens selection. Now this camera came out in 2020. There's a bigger lens selection from when it came out, but compared to like say a Sony or a Canon, uh, it has an L mount, which, you know, there's some options there, but it just doesn't have as big of a lens selection as say Sony, Canon or whatever. Maybe you can get a converter. I haven't looked into what converters would be able to work without like warping or vignetting or whatever. I, I know that can happen with some stuff. The lens selection isn't crazy, but for what I've managed to do with the camera thus far or what I need, my, uh, my Sigma 14 to 24 and then the kit lens, it's 20 to 60 millimeters with the S5 that it comes with so far, it's treated me well and that's been cool with me. If a big lens selection is big to you, which to most people I'm sure it is, just keep that in mind when you're kind of looking to get the S5 or if you're coming from the GH5, if you have a big selection of micro four thirds lenses, if you have like say, the Metabone Speed Booster, and now you have a bunch of other lenses, just keep that in mind. So that is probably one of the last cons I would mention with the S5. But overall, this camera is probably my favorite camera I've ever used. Coming from the GH5, like I already said, it is a full frame GH5 through and through in my opinion. It's done absolutely everything I've needed it to do. I love the V-Log. Um, I love the fact that I can shoot in higher ISOs. I love the image quality. I love the fact that the body is really nice. I love having bigger lenses, that's just me. Makes it easier for handheld footage. IBIS is pretty good. You know, 6K ProRes RAW with the Ninja Atmos which I plan to do when I kind of get a, a body cage for the camera and everything like that. Being able to do that externally is dope. You can shoot an anamorphic, which is great for social. I got that from Chris Howe. That was a great thing that he mentioned. And one of the things that actually made me want to pick up this camera. Accessibility features on the camera are just as dope as the GH5. And overall, I just think it's a really good upgrade 
from the GH5. If you're a big GH5 fanboy like I was, you love Panasonic and you're just looking for a really solid camera in that sort of Lumix Panasonic family, I think the S5 is a dope pickup. And the fact that it's it's literally fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars for all this, like remember the price point when you're kind of considering all the competitors to this camera because at this price point i think it's absolutely the best camera in the market for this price point that i don't think a lot of people would fight me on but hey um i'm willing to hear other people's opinions down in the comments about that anyways guys my name is jason morrison i just want to give you guys my first impressions of the lumix s5 definitely the my my favorite camera that i've ever used that's what i'm shooting this video on um and i'm gonna be bringing you guys a lot of videos with the s5 i went out to san francisco i went out to minnesota and i got some footage out there i have some story videos coming soon probably leagues above the stuff i've already put out uh, i do a lot of videography filmmaking content just talk about my uh my journey becoming a filmmaker i've done a lot of new projects with this s5 so you'll be seeing a lot of those coming soon so drop a like on this video if you guys like this type of videos a lot of filmmaking tutorials storytelling and uh just introspective stuff you guys know me i'm always talking about stuff like that coming soon subscribe if you're new uh, i'm gonna keep it like that guys it's jason morrison i'll see you guys in the next video deuces